Who doesn't enjoy the occasional controversy or two that graces our lives, especially when it involves the behind the scenes of the ever legendary Formula One? This time, we have our eyes on Piastri, whose entire fate rests on one decision. And in case you think we're exaggerating, you have another thing coming for you. Before we give more away, we're going to get straight to it. First and foremost, let's go through some details. We all know that when two teams and one driver are involved, things can get quite messy. Two of the leading teams in Formula One, Alpine and McLaren, are both competing for the services of the Australian for the year 2023. After all, the greater the services, the greater the competition. According to the Concord Agreement, both teams are required to follow CRB's decision and not take any further legal action to overturn it. Now, in case you didn't know, Contract Recognition Board, or CRB as most call it, was formed in the wake of Michael Schumacher's departure from Jordan and Benetton, and the following expulsion of Roberto Moreno from the latter. Now that's an entire story within itself that we'd love to tell you someday. Anyhow, back to our current story, CRB usually operates quietly in the background, making headlines only when there is a loud dispute or controversy, as we like to call it. It is mentioned in Appendix 5 of the FIA Sporting Regulations, but it is actually empty, marked, reserved for the exclusive use of the FIA Formula One World Championship competitors. The full details of how it works are enshrined in Concord and, as a result, are little known even among F1 drivers. The CRB exists separately from the FIA. Its job is to inform the governing body of which team has a valid driver contract and is qualified to hold a super license on their behalf. Sounds fair, doesn't it? And that's what Piastri faces right now, a simple decision made by the CRB that could change his entire fate in the world of racing. While we're at this, here's a deeper dive into contracts, loyalty, and more. CRB's primary function is to hold all F1 race, reserve, and test driver contracts, or at least the key sections of them. Teams are also not required to submit all documents because full contracts are complex and cover marketing issues among others. When a disagreement arises, as it often does in Formula One, three lawyers convene to examine the evidence from all sides. They must provide the outcome within three days of the hearing. Some might call that too little, but we think it's just the right amount. Give it too long and it'd end up inviting unnecessary speculation and politics. In two of the most well-known CRB cases, the rider's original Team 1, while the team attempting to poach him lost. This occurred in 1995 when David Coulthard attempted to leave Williams for McLaren and 10 years later when Jensen Button attempted to move from BAR to Williams. Timo Glock is one person who has used CRB and achieved the desired results. His hearing was held in person a few days before the video call. The dispute, as is often the case, centered on the specifics of the option. Curious? Don't worry, coming up we've got all the details mapped out for you. Glock was a test driver for BMW Sauber in 2007, and then, of course, he was offered a race seat at Toyota, and BMW now had to put him in the seat, which sadly, they didn't do. How unfortunate, we must say. But, get this, at the stage, BMW said otherwise. Timo said that he didn't even remember how many people were present in the room, but that there were lawyers who looked at each party's side. Everyone is required to give his statement. BMW put their opinion on the table, and we had our opinion, and then they clearly make the decision, the driver said. CRB, surprisingly, took the right step for Glock. They decided that there was no offer from BMW for a racing seat. Well, he had one waiting for him at Toyota. He was free to go. Of course, things got a little awkward, but they all had to go there, because in CRB's and Glock's point of view, the situation was as clear as day. BMW simply wanted to keep him as a reserve, but at the end of the day, there was no seat. In other words, they missed their opportunity to land a stellar driver. So it was pretty easy, and it was quickly done. I think on Monday, maybe it will take a bit longer. Glock also mentioned how it was a good process overall. According to him, if a problem like this arises, it is best to consult a lawyer or board who have no favor and simply go by legal regulations. Otherwise, the fight would never stop, and no one likes when fights get dirty. Coming up, let's take a look at Piastri's possible fate. If Alpine wins the CRB case, it does not guarantee that Piastri will be racing for the Enstone team in 2023. This will be quite unfortunate, we must add, but the truth can't be denied. Given the hostility surrounding his attempts to join McLaren, it's clear that the relationship has deteriorated to the point where he is effectively forced to drive. It would make no sense for either party. In this case, Alpine would be able to set its own price and sell it to McLaren. Alpine, on the other hand, could theoretically
theoretically be of interest to other teams looking to hire Piastri or trade him for someone with a contract elsewhere, such as Pierre Gasly. If McLaren is unable to sign Piastri, either due to the CRB decision or the subsequent Alpine deal, he will have to find another driver to replace Daniel Ricciardo. If Alpine loses, there is a chance that legal action will be taken, though not for claims for its services. Alpine team manager Otmar Safnauer has stated that the company will consider filing a damages claim to recoup funds spent on testing programs and so on. Yikes! We'll just have to wait with bated breath to see what goes down. Now, here's some other news that might interest you. First up, what's this about Verstappen being on another planet? Max Verstappen extended his world championship lead at the Belgian Grand Prix with a strong drive from 14th place on the grid. Charles Leclerc came in 5th place, while Lewis Hamilton crashed on the first lap in Spa. One thing we love about Formula One, it takes mere seconds for the tables of fate to change. Verstappen won comfortably in the end, despite starting 14th on the grid and carving up the field in dominant fashion. It was the Dutchman's lowest ever finish, surpassing his previous round victory from a 10th place in Hungary. Sergio Perez, Verstappen's teammate, finished second, with Carlos Sainz finishing third. Verstappen's closest title rival, Charles Leclerc, struggled to find his rhythm in the other Ferrari after starting 15th. All in all, it was a good day for the crowd's favorite man. Verstappen has now won 9 of this season's 14 races and is 92 points ahead of Perez, who has replaced Leclerc in second place. He was the fastest in qualifying, but he was one of 8 drivers relegated to the back of the grid after a power unit change, and the others couldn't keep up with the Red Bulls. Perez helped keep the chasing pack at bay, but both had a relaxing afternoon as everyone struggled to keep up with the Red Bulls' blistering pace. So, it's no no wonder that Verstappen is on another planet. We would be too if we had his speed. Next up on our news radar is McLaren and Ricardo's divorce. Here's what we know so far. McLaren and Daniel Ricardo have mutually agreed to end his contract one year early, which means the eight-time race winner will leave at the end of the 2022 season. The Australian signed a three-year contract with McLaren for 2021, racing alongside Lando Norris, and well, he won the team's first race since 2012 at Monza last year. With Norris second, he has struggled to match his teammate's impressive pace. On the eve of the Belgian Grand Prix, as Formula One resumed its summer break, Ricardo and McLaren announced that they would compete in the final nine races of the season together before splitting up. McLaren promises to reveal who will partner Norris in 2023 in due course. Ricardo will do the same with regard to his own future plans, but has stated his desire to remain in F1. You can all take a sigh of relief, he's not leaving just yet. As a parting message, the driver mentioned that it was a privilege to be part of the McLaren family. Lastly, we have a little flash to the past. If you're a Formula One fanatic, we're sure you're familiar with James Hunt. He was a legendary Formula One driver and one half of the sport's most infamous rivalry with Nicky Lada, who warned the racer that his lifestyle would kill him. The Formula One driver was known for his skill on the track, but he also led a lavish lifestyle of extravagance off the track, quickly becoming the sport's ultimate playboy. James Hunt would have turned 75 today if it hadn't been for a fatal heart attack when he was just 45 in 1993. Hunt and Lada had a fierce rivalry on the circuits, capturing the world and dividing fans because they were polar opposites. Lauda was a soft-spoken, straight-laced introvert, whereas Hunt happily indulged in public as a wild playboy. But this fun rivalry came to an unprecedented end before its time, and Lada's warning sadly proved to be a little too right. That's a wrap for today, guys. See you next time.